here's what you'll need to repair the pigtail on your IP camera. You need an IP camera with a bad pigtail, a 964, I'm sorry, a 564 X bit, or the Allen key that came with your camera. Here are needle nose pliers. Say specialized tool. We took a flathead screwdriver and dremeled out the center so that we could get contact on either side right here on the camera. Also we have a bit of masking tape to be able to hold something to cover the lens so it doesn't get damaged. Let's get started. So first, I'm going to cover the lens so it doesn't get damaged. So here we are. I'm going to make sure that masking tape doesn't cover the outside of the casing where it's going to be disassembled. We're going to unscrew. Once you have the camera disassembled, it's good to have a cup around to place the screws into so you don't lose them. Now that we have it taken apart, we need to get into the back here where this pigtail is underneath. I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver and ever so gently remove the Molex connector. Just getting it right underneath, using very little leverage to push it out. You see on the edges it has a lip. Once that's removed, and the Molex connector here is also removed, You have to be really careful not to damage any of the internal components on the motherboard. Scraping a screwdriver across one of the traces could damage the circuit. Now, the assembly is in two pieces. We'll remove the weather stripping. Now that our housing is in two pieces, we're going to unscrew the screws here, here, and here. Once those screws are removed, can pull the housing out. All right. With the housing removed. You can see the Molex connector for the pigtail. We're going to remove this as well. There 
there are little uh, lips on either side that you can use to just kind of move it back and forth. So here. here we have snip the Molex connector off the big tail. That way we can slide this right out without much need force. At this point, you'll have to remove each and every one of the wires by raising this lever here and removing the pin. There's a notch inside holding each of them in place. And you have to be careful to do this one at a time. Unfortunately, there's no specialized tool. Uh, we choose to use a razor here. Here is the pinout of the Pigtails 10 pin connector. This is the technique that we used to raise the locking lever in order to remove the pins one at a time. Make sure the locking nut goes on first, then the weather grommet before you feed the lines through the camera housing. Once the pigtail is fed through the housing, you can begin attaching the pins again. Uh, make sure that they follow the same order they were before removing them. Take a look at the pinout you just saw if you're not sure. Once the pins are back inside the connector, we're going to want to tighten down the locking nut. This is imperative that you do this before assembly. It's a tight fit and the pigtail will turn at times with the nut. You don't want to pull out the pins from the connector with the assembled camera. Make sure the jacket doesn't extend outside of the housing either. After removing and replacing the pins, their connections could be loose. Make sure everything is in place tightly. Now to keep them from coming out of their homes, we're going to use a small amount of thread sealer. This thread sealer is Loctite. It's non-conductive. We have a disposable surface set up um, along with a tool to apply the compound. We're only going to use a small amount. Um, it's not very viscous either. And then you can apply it with whatever tool you'd like. Uh, we're choosing to use a toothpick today. Squirt out a little bit. Apply it right to the connection point. Once you're done applying it, uh, you'll have to let it set for about an hour or so in order to let it dry. Just a little bit more. Now that the sealer is dried, let's get everything together. Uh, make sure when you're connecting the 10 pin connector that the pins on the board are lined up with the holes on the connector. Trying to insert it the wrong way could damage the pins on the board and brick your camera. Just line it up and snap it into place. Now we'll connect the three pin connector between the Super IR LED and the camera's components. Uh, make sure to match the notch and the groove these connectors tend to only fit one way. If you look closely, you'll notice the areas that have to be lined up. Now that everything's connected on the other side of the plate, uh, we're going to affix it to the camera's housing. There are three locations for screws um, and two locations with notches. This camera can only lay flat when it's oriented in one direction. Once it's flat, screw the plate down in three locations.
Next we'll be adding the weather stripping. Slide it over the housing to meet in the middle. This one sits tongue and groove style, so fit it into place. Not doing so will cause water to get inside the housing. Uh, you want to make sure that you're keeping your camera waterproof. And let's connect the two pin connector from the IR LED to the PCB of the camera. And while I'm in here, I'm just going to clean the lens off with a cloth and just to make sure that everything still looks nice. And put both the ends of the housing flush together. Uh, making sure the screw holes on either side of the camera match and then uh, screw them down to secure the housing together. This is a lot easier to do with the Allen key tool that you receive with the camera, so make sure you hold on to that. One more here. Now the camera is reassembled, you can go test it out. Thanks for watching. Questions or comments? Use the discussion box below the article.